French Alps are known for their epic mountain beauty, but did you know that they're also home to the world's largest connected ski area? Welcome to Trois Vallées, home of eight towns, 600 kilometers of trails, and tons of beautiful places in between. Join us as we check out all of these towns on skis, break down the price of staying here, and show you some quirks about French ski culture. On y va. Located in the Savoie region of eastern France, Trois Vallées is a unified network of eight ski areas, each with a unique culture that attracts all sorts of people. The northernmost Saint Bon Valley is home to the glitzy town of Courchevel, the only one with its own jet port. To the south lies the Alloy Valley, which during our time here hosted this year's Alpine Ski World Championship in the charming town of Maribel. And finally, the southernmost Belleville Valley is home to the lively town of Val Turenne and the village where our tour of Trois Vallées begins. La Menuire. Which roughly translates to the Carpenters. And it's known for its friendly family vibe. You see a lot of kids here, a lot of ski schools. Their tagline here is actually Friendly Menuire. It's a nice little ski town. A lot of places to stay. There's a lot of little shops and, and cheese shops and butchers. Uh, the center has a little tower on it. And it's all connected by different ski runs and the little gondolas that take you wherever you need to go. You really don't need a car here, which makes it a great place to visit if you're not from France or from uh, nearby. We started exploring the three valleys by heading up valley to Le Menuire to ski around Val Turenne. If you're wondering how ski color is mapped to difficulty in France, you'll find the name of the run and its corresponding color in the bottom right hand corner of the screen so you can get to see for yourself what a green, blue, red, and black run look like in ascending order of difficulty. The runs have a lot of mountain chalets that provide coffee, beer, and food in case the views don't keep you full, and on a sense, there are a huge variety of chairlifts, gondolas, and cable cars to keep your time between runs interesting. Check out these sled dogs. That's a bunch of good boys. Valterrain is known for its young, lively atmosphere, with legendary après ski spot La Folie Douce nestled on the ridge overlooking the town. But we weren't ready to take off our skis, so we pushed on into the valley above Valterrain to get a gun sight view of the entire valley and the town below. We were rewarded with an area that felt more remote, with its runs cutting through the mountain peaks and the views kept our eyes wandering on our way down. And we weren't the only ones. The scale of this place was just starting to dawn on us as we climbed to the top of what was only the first valley of Trois Vallées. Top of the world here above Val Turenne, right over here. This is amazing. Mary's absolutely shredding it. Skied above Val Turenne, we noticed lifts going over a ridge toward the town of Arel and wanted to go explore. So what today is three valleys started as separate ski resorts. So there was Val Turenne, there was Le Menuir, Maribel, Courcheval, and then in 1971 they connected all of these ski resorts to make the world's largest ski area. This is really cool because you get to actually explore an entire region on skis, which I've just never done before and honestly didn't know was possible. We're going to take Fritel de Touran to the town of Orel. See that cable car there? It takes you over the ridge to another little town. It turns out that there's actually a fourth valley in Trois Vallées, as if three wasn't enough. So we followed our skis to learn more. Honestly, it's my favorite run so far and we sort of stumbled on that lift to go to Aral. The Aral Valley is a beautiful pocket of runs that's a window out of Trois Vallées offering stunning views of the Alps beyond. This area is as big as an entire ski resort back home, but here it was just a bonus valley that gave us four for the price of three. I've noticed here is the difference in ski culture between the US and Europe. I think ski culture in the US is more like rad. Here, no one even thinks twice and everyone puts down the safety bar. 
but I get so many groans in, at Heavenly or at North Star in the U.S. It feels like there's no one here. I know. It's just empty because it's just so giant, I think. Eventually, we hopped on a gondola to take a coffee break and see the small town of Varel in the valley below. We didn't realize that this meant descending almost a thousand meters in 20 minutes, but we were excited to see the town. Actually took us to a different region of France. We're no longer in Savoy. We're in the Rhone Alps. <laughs> it's a pretty long gondola. Orel has very different vibes from all the different ski towns we've been in, mainly because this doesn't feel like a ski town. This feels like just a, a regular town, which I kind of dig. I mean, just sort of normal stone buildings here. There's no apparel stores or ski rental stores everywhere. Um, just some chicken wire, someone's shed. A lot of these buildings made of stone and slate stone roofs, which is really actually kind of charming to me. So sweet. Yeah, like look at this shed. That's cool, I know. <laughs> Some people who live here, it's just a shed, but I mean, all the rocks What's stacked up. It's romance. We got the, the old refrigeration system of outside the window. Window cheese. Yeah, it's like window <laughs> cheese. When we were hiking in the Dolomites, we had a cheese that we brought from Venice, and we just slung it over the window in the huts. After Aurel, we enjoyed the views back up the ridge and made our way back to our home valley. We eagerly skied back to Lemon Weir to explore our little adopted town, grab some provisions, and get a feel for how the French ski towns work. Uh, environ 300 grams de jambon aux herbes. 300 grams? Combien de tranches? 8 tranches. Check out this funky tower. I feel like a Bond villain shoots a laser out of that. Emblematic of all of these church spires that you see in these alpine towns. That's true. So that's cool. It takes that sort of historic architecture and re envisions it in a ski town. <laughs> a basket holder? Oh, that is nifty. So this tower of beauty is creamed honey. And so this is local honey that's been creamed and then you can just cut a slice and bring it home. I've literally never seen this in my life and it is so beautiful. I feel like Winnie the Pooh right now, just like geeking out over honey. Here's a section that's for regional products. It's for making raclette and fondue. So come here to get your fondue stuff. Ooh. <laughs> that's a giant Swiss cheese. We're literally in the middle of a ski resort mountain. I've seen three independent cheese shops. <laughs> Love France. I bet there are people from France watching this saying, what's the big deal? But I think to, uh, to Americans, this is sort of a novelty. I mean, to have like, all these cheese shops, look at this. Delis, this tiny little independent food court in the middle of a ski resort is really a novelty. One of the things that was really cool about sitting in this region of Savoie is that they have a really strong local food culture. What I did really love is Suro. So we actually got this from a local distiller in Moutier before our bus ride up. I saw this distillery called Lo Fol. And so obviously I had to pop in. And so the person in there was super helpful. Apparently Suro is a berry that is forged for in the mountains around this town. And wow. so they distill it and it uh, can be had in a number of different ways. People will have it as like an aperitif or a digestif. A lot of people actually mix it with white wine. So it sort of takes a French 75 approach. Great to have on your uh, on its own, but I'm excited to maybe mix it with some white wine and try that. So, That's so very cool. cool local specialty. And then of course, French chocolate. This milk chocolate with uh, hazelnuts, uh, you can see the little marmots on it. They're really proud of, I think that the marmot is a common animal here. Um, so this is like the alpine one. And this is an herbal tea 
that has fennel and orange blossom and then lemon verbena. So again, check out the marmots. This is a sort of glacier sunscreen that is intended to be worn on really cold days that will sort of insulate your skin from the cold and also keep you from getting a sunburn. And I threw this in here because we got it here and it's also made in France. All right, let me show you guys our apartment here in Le Menuire. This is the front door. Facing away from the door, we'll take one, two, 10, 11, 12 steps to get to the tiny balcony. So it's small, but this apartment is extremely modular. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, the bed is right up here, right when you walk in from the front door. And then the side panels of this raised bed are all closets that pull out. We got another closet. This closet has all of our clothes in it. And up here is the bed. I would say it's like a double bed. It's a little unkempt right now, and there's actually a reason for that. These bare bones co-op-esque apartments have very few amenities. We had to bring our own sheets, towels, and soap. It feels like a classic uh, French middle-class experience. People who stay here are asked to clean up after themselves to reduce the price. Be sure to book your apartment from Saturday to Saturday for an entire week. We had to book ours from Friday to Friday, and we had a devil of a time getting someone to take us. So the kitchen has everything we need. We got two burners, a fridge, and here's the living room. This is a fine fur from what I assume is a downed Care Bear. I feel like if National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation was a French film, then Carl Griswold would bring the family to Menwear and they would stay in this teeny apartment. <laughs> Itching for another day of exploring, we skied over the ridge to the neighboring Aloe Valley and enjoyed another perfect day of mind-boggling views. Look at that cliff right there. Just a straight shot down. Unfortunately, the snow this year hasn't been the greatest in the Alps, and it was a stark contrast from what our Lake Tahoe, California ski areas looked like. Yeah, I'd say so far the snow here is not as good as the waist deep powder we had in Tahoe a couple months ago. Woo! Lost the ski! It hasn't snowed here for a while, so not like a snow paradise, but definitely a paradise of views and, and an experience. But the excitement of the area and all the small discoveries we made along the way made the snow we were actually skiing on an afterthought. At lunch, we stopped at a small restaurant on the ridge and tried some mountain delicacies. Mary's enjoying a nice lunch. Look at that. Mary makes a different kind of panini in every country we've been in and we also brought egg, egg. <laughs> <laughs> and I got something for us I got vin chaud this is hot wine mulled wine Mary got a little mineral water and look at this meringue that they have here <laughs> isn't that amazing this is gonna be a feast Mary's lounging hard right now look at her <gasps> hey Mayor how are we feeling feels so good there's a ski dog here on the slopes look at this cute little guy they got these chairlifts here that I've never seen before. They have a visor cover that's tinted, kind of like sunglasses, that you roll over when you're sitting in the chairlift. There she is, Maribel. Here's the World Championship race course. You got stands there, all the markings. US Olympian Michaela Schifrin is competing at this World Championship here. Nicely decorated. Couple Christmas arches here. I'm on a quest to find mineral water for Mary. So I'm gonna check out Mary Bell in the process. Looks pretty nice. I'd say the architecture here is nice. You got the classic wooden alpine hut style. This place has a lot. Medical center, they've got a pool, bowling. I saw an ice rink as well, spa area. This is nice. Before you have kids, when you're in your 30s and you still got a lot of disposable income, you come here, treat your fiance for a nice weekend. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting. I'm telling you, man, French and their carousels. These things are everywhere. You want to ride the ponies? Come to France. I almost absolutely ate it and took down an entire awning. 
my heel hit ice, went back, caught myself on an awning, but it wasn't, you know, it's not like bolted down to the ground. <laughs> Just averted major disaster. Look at how much I'll do for mineral water for Mary. She has no idea. She's just sitting back and relaxing. Best, thank you so much. <laughs> you got it. We might find an Apres ski place to check out what the Apres ski vibe looks like here. Welcome to Rock 7, Mary. Hands <laughs> up with you. Hands up in the air. Put your fucking hands up in the air. What do you got for me, Mary? This is a Campari spritz. Campari spritz? This is a Hugo spritz. It has Saint Germain. We're not serving hard liquor right now, which right. honestly seems like a good idea. <laughs> Sante, welcome to Europe. Dancing queen. Well, it's pretty unbeatable. It's a nice way to end the day. A couple of spritzes and some Whitney Houston. A little Whitney Houston sing along. It's probably a good time for you guys to drop out because it's going to get maybe a little messy. We made sure to ski back down to Menwear in one piece because we had a big night ahead of us. Skiing down had us thinking, how did we even get here? And well, you might literally be thinking the same thing. The great news is, it's actually quite simple to get here by train from Paris, even if you're going on a bachelorette trip. The five hours flies by on the train while you soak in the scenery and enjoy a nice meal with all the great food you can buy in Paris. By the time you reach the tiny town of Moutier, you'll be excited to explore the adorable streets and discover some of its interesting sights. Look right behind you, Mary, what is literally a cheese vending machine. One kilogram of Beaufort and a vending machine here. This is Honestly, incredible. I didn't think that anything could make me love the French more. <laughs> Finally, the bus station joined to the train station will take you up to the towns which will show you how to properly end a day of skiing. We decided to accept the French cheese challenge known as raclette and weren't disappointed. Look at the size of this cheese. This is enormous. We just got a giant piece of cheese and we literally have no idea what to do with it now. I have no idea. But this is gorgeous. All right, it's Mary. really hot. It's <laughs> yeah, it's hot. molten cheese. And we are slowly running out of steam. Speak for yourself. We're officially destroyed after the raclette. The cheese has won. Cheese won, bronze zero. We went to celebrate our loss to the undefeated raclette by visiting Menweer's Sports Center and Spa nearby. For 19 euros each, we got access to all the spa had to offer with its custom relaxation system. So this is how you spa. You start in the hammam, hot steam room, cold shower, rest, go to the sauna, another shower, rest, and you go to the jacuzzi. Sounds pretty good. We learned about the hammam, which is a kind of Turkish bath where you sit in hot steam. The complex also had a moat to stop intruders with shoes on and a smart locker system. It was 38 euros well spent and sealed our fate of a deep sleep. Good morning. So today we are going to Courcheval, which is over this first ridge where the valley of Maribel townships are. We're going to go over a second ridge and that's where Courchevel is. Courchevel is known as a more like upscale town. When I looked at the Airbnb prices, I saw some that were like tens of thousands of euros for a week. If you want to bring your helicopter there, uh, you can meet us there today. Paragliding adventures here. Keep your skis on and you go in tandem with someone who knows how to paraglide. That would be wild. Not for the people who are scared of heights. Well, we are in the valley. Courchevel. Look at that hut just perched right out there. You can see the foundation is just built right into the rock. 
We got views down to Courchevel that way. We got this jagged sawtooth mountain over here. How about it, Mare? How was that red? It was a little steep. It was a little steep. This run had a bit more snow, so it allowed you to sort of dig in a little bit. I think if this was icy, it would be challenging. Look at that saddle right there. That's incredible. Ridge going over. You can see behind it. If you look past that spire, is Mont Blanc. Unbelievable. We got Pierre Chalet, Chalet of the Peters. <laughs> Here's Courchevel. Yeah, I think it might be pretty nice because even the gondolas are Gucci branded. It is undeniable. The French love carousels. Middle of the mountains. Find a way. Find a way. We got a carousel. Look at these guys. Have a little snack. So cute. These are chocolat chaud viennois, which uh, means with chantilly, aka whipped cream. I got a white chocolate one and a chocolate one for Mary to choose. This looks so good. Can we share? Can we we just... can share. Okay, I'm so excited. I've never heard of white hot chocolate. It tastes like a hot milkshake. So it's not quite vanilla, but it's almost like a sweet cream hot milkshake. Dior store, Louis Vuitton. Rolex store, Hermes store. You know, all the outdoor shops. Yeah, this I like. Check out the stone church. You got a big silver bell in there. That's nice. Well, I definitely didn't see a uh, caviar store in La Menuire or in Val -Turin. The architecture here is gorgeous. Look at that mountain cabin style. Um, even just like the quaint um, little balconies. La Menuire feels like where a typical French family comes up for seven days, rents a tiny studio, uh, and uh, buys stuff at the cheese shop. Whereas this mu very much feels like you're going to your chalet, uh, you're gonna go shopping, and you're, you're gonna look extra stylish on the slopes. Like, you're gonna look like that. Yeah, like you're gonna that. look like the, the sparkly marshmallow. The glitz of Courchevel begs the question, how affordable is visiting Trois-Vallées? Surprisingly affordable compared to its American counterparts, even including traveling from across the pond. Let's compare what we paid for two adults versus the average prices we saw in Tahoe. Our tiny apartment in Le Menuire was $917 a week compared to the median entire apartment with a kitchenette in Tahoe that cost $2,300 for seven days on Airbnb. Next, seven-day ski passes at Trois Vallées cost 380 euros each, which comes out to around $850 for two people. Whereas seven-day lift tickets at Heavenly Mountain, and I'm not kidding, were listed at $1,200 each, clocking in at around $2,400 for two people, but I've seen them as high as $1,400 per person. Thankfully, we already have an epic pass, so we got seven free ski days at Trois Vallées, making this trip more affordable. Finally, even assuming you can get to Heavenly for free but have to fly and train from California to Trois Vallées, you're still saving around $1,000 by seeing a new country, eating a giant piece of cheese, and skiing at the world's largest connected ski area. And as we skied out of Courchevel, we reflected on how we ended up discovering a place so foreign to us months before. We found that planning our next trip without assuming what is and isn't possible beforehand has led us to our most epic adventures, whether that's skiing in France or driving a scooter into the Sierra Nevadas and sleeping under the stars. We strapped in for one last run up to Pointe de la Masse, where we caught one more view of Mont Blanc before we returned this summer to hike the TMB. Well, we're here at the top of Pointe de la Masse for our last ski run down. It's a little bittersweet but I hope you enjoyed exploring the major towns in uh, Trois Vallées. Uh, learning a few quirks of French ski culture and hopefully our insight into price and logistics uh, could make it possible for you to come to Trois Vallées as well. And when you do come skiing, make sure you also check out Paris. We've spent a week exploring Paris, so check out our video on that. And until next time, au revoir. Au revoir.